Okay, so hopefully you've had time to go and do a little bit of work on understanding IMF and how they work and some of the vocab that I spit at you in the last couple of videos. Um, another piece of vocab here is something called van der Waals forces. When I say IMF, other people might use the phrase van der Waals forces. Both of those mean exactly the same thing. And I've been using the phrase intermolecular forces. So here is, uh, what is this? Ethanol. This is the thing you drink to get drunk. Not a lot of it. It's actually poison. Everything is a poison. But if you drink enough ethanol, it is a poison, so be careful. Anyway, ethanol has two carbons and an OH group. That's called an alcohol group. It's not the same thing as like a base. OK, they're different. Whenever you've got carbon connected to an O, it changes, it changes the dynamics a bit. So this is an alcohol, not a base. And as it turns out, oxygen is an electron hog. So it's really, really negative, which means when you think about how the two ethanol molecules next to each other are going to hang out, they're going to orient so that the positive hydrogen is going to be next to the negative oxygen. And you might be asking, why not these hydrogens? And that's a great question. The reason for that is pretty simple. These hydrogens are connected to carbon, which is not very electronegative. It's pretty close to hydrogen and electronegativity value. So these bonds are not very polar. But this hydrogen is connected to an oxygen, which means it is really, really polar. So this is more positive because the oxygen is pulling electron density towards it. So this hydrogen is more positive than these hydrogens are, which means it's going to hang out with the adjoining oxygen better. Okay, so that is actually an example of hydrogen bonding, which again is not actually a bond. So we call this IMF inter ER molecular forces. It's like the internet. The internet is connecting my computer to your computer right now, but they're not actually physically touching. We have studied intramolecular forces. Okay, intramolecular forces are usually what we would call covalent or ionic or metallic bonds. So they are very, very high in energy. That's what holds molecules together. So compared to intermolecular forces, intramolecular forces are much, much stronger. And that's good. Otherwise, our molecules would fall apart on a regular basis, and that would stink. All right. Um, so IMF break apart fairly easily. All I have to do is add a little bit of energy, heat or stirring or something like that. And I can break apart these bonds. The, Oh, that was wrong. Don't say that. I can break apart these intermolecular forces. In terms of breaking bonds, it's actually really tough to do. One way I could break apart these intramolecular forces is if I, if I lit it on fire. So I have to add quite a bit of energy to do that. Normally, when you break bonds, you have to put energy in every time. But sometimes you get energy back, um, which you, of course, do when you burn ethanol. It's an exothermic reaction. OK. So here's some questions for you to think about. We're gonna, um, we're gonna address these in our live session, the first live session we're gonna have. So I want you to think about why would a solid crystal stay together? What makes that happen? Um, what makes liquids stay together? How permanent or, or temporary are those interactions? Think about that kind of thing. So a quick overview of the four types of IMF going in order of increasing energy. First, we have London dispersion forces. Everything has London dispersion forces because everything has electrons. And so essentially what we have is one atom with a random distribution of electrons. Remember, electrons move a lot quickly. Uh, and we have another atom next to it with a random distribution of electrons. These are not bonded to each other. These are just two separate particles. At some point in time, one of these is going to have a random arrangement of electrons where they happen to be kind of concentrated on one side. We are going to get a partial negative charge. So this right here is a lowercase delta symbol. I'm going to show you how to write that. OK, kind of looks like a funky D where you started at the top and it's like cursive. But, so it means partial charge. So what we have here when we put a negative there is partially negative. That means just that the electron density is a little bit more concentrated on one side than the other. So if we have a random chance of electrons being on one particular side of an atom, that means it's going to have a partially positive charge on the other side. This is called a temporary dipole. So we could 
draw the dipole just like we were for the permanent ones, but we have to understand that it only lasts for a very, very brief period of time, which is what makes LDF so weak. So we have a dipole here, which is going to affect the electrons next to it, right? So if you had a partially positive charge, all of a sudden these electrons are going to slosh over to that side. That's called an induced dipole. It's not permanent, it doesn't stay there forever. It happens because the neighbor randomly arranged their electrons all on one side. It would be like if I pushed all my furniture to one side of my house, it causes my neighbor's furniture to go in the same direction. That's what's happening. The uh, two houses don't have to touch for this to happen because electrostatic interactions happen through space. That is temporary. Again, it goes away quick, which makes LDF weak. Nonpolar molecules only have London dispersion forces. They don't have any other forces to hold them together. That's different from a permanent dipole, which is always there, never going away. Anytime you have HCl, for example, it's always going to align itself this way. This is pure HCl, no water, so not an acid. Uh, what it's going to do is have the positive side, uh, sorry, these are backwards. Oh, no. I can use the magic of, of the internet to change that, though, I think. At any rate, it's going to have the negative side always be oriented toward the positive side of the other molecule. Yeah. That looks weird. There you go. So positive because hydrogen has a lower electronegativity and chlorine has a higher electronegativity. So that's the way our dipoles are going to go. Okay. But the idea is that we always have the negative side against the positive side 100% of the time. That's permanent. It doesn't go away, which is different from LDF. As soon as these electrons rearrange, there won't be an induced dipole anymore. So the permanent dipole means that those two molecules have a tendency to stick together better than things that only have London dispersion forces. That means they're more likely to be a liquid or solid. Our next strongest IMF is hydrogen bonds. Remember, they're not actually bonds, okay? It's a lie, don't believe it. It turns out hydrogen bonds are one of the most important parts of biochemistry. It is the reason your body does anything, literally, okay? So we have to understand how it works. Water is an excellent example of hydrogen bonding. It has a, what we call a hydrogen bond acceptor, that's the negative, part of a molecule, and hydrogen bond donors, which are um, essentially any time you have an N attached to an H, or an F attached to an H, or an O attached to an H, those are donors. It means that the, those atoms are very electronegative. They're the three most electronegative atoms in the periodic table. So when you have a hydrogen connected to them, which is not very good at stealing electrons, there's gonna be a high electron density on these, the N, the O, and the F. Um, I once had a student who told me they remember hydrogen bonds happen whenever there is fun. Get it? Yeah, I know, it's funny. <laughs> so you have to have an H attached to one of these in order to have a hydrogen bond. Water has two hydrogen bonding locations. You have two OH bonds. So each one of those is going to interact with adjacent molecules. So this is how liquid water forms structures on sort of the, the molecular level. Why do we care, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. The reason is if we didn't have this, uh, ice would actually freeze from the bottom up. And if it froze from the bottom up, we would die. That's a long story short, but um, ice freezes at the top of the water because there are less hydrogen bonding interactions. You don't have anything on the top. So you can form uh, closer and closer interactions with everything below. That's good because it insulates our rivers and streams instead of uh, allowing the entire thing to freeze permanently forever and ever. Another place hydrogen bonds are absolutely critical is in DNA. All right, so I did my graduate work on RNA, which is really, really similar. And hydrogen bonding is even more important in RNA. But most people know what DNA looks like. Hopefully you remember this from high school. This is an actual crystal image. We call it crystallography. 
of DNA, right? So you can see that it has that spiral structure that we all know and love. And the thing is though, if you look, um, so these are our bases. I've drawn a sort of blown up version of guanine and cytosine here because they have three hydrogen bonding sites. And what makes DNA so cool uh, in terms of molecular assembly, like the guy studying Yoda, I mean, he's not studying Yoda, but the guy who made the Yoda, what makes DNA so special is that it has absolutely no bonds that hold those two strands together. If it did, your DNA could not be replicated. If for some reason you end up with a covalent bond between these two strands, these opposite strands, it can't split apart and be copied and the cell dies. That's a mutation. It's a lethal mutation every time. Um, in fact, well, never mind. I was going to tell you about this cool research about platinum, but if you're interested in how cancer drugs work, bring it up in class and we'll talk about it. The point is, though, if you look at this crystal structure, each time it rotates around, you can see that the bases actually have a big space between them, big in terms of molecules anyway. Um, that means they're not actually bonded together. They're not one big giant molecule, right? Each strand of DNA is a big giant molecule, but when you put them together and twist them like that, it is not bonded. It does have hydrogen bonding sites though. Those are IMF. They are pretty strong. And for every hydrogen bonding site, you get more and more strength. So your DNA just doesn't come unraveled at a, a sort of random moment. That would suck. That's a good way to get a lot of mutations. Um, Mutations aren't always bad, though. Sometimes they're interesting, like red hair, blue eyes. Those are mutations. Um, pale skin, also a mutation. Um, but normally, quite often, when mutations happen, they can be bad. So our DNA has to have mechanisms to protect that. And one of them is by having literally hundreds of thousands of hydrogen bonds to hold them together. This is just one set of bases, but each piece of DNA is made out of so, so many, so many, literally hundreds of thousands of base pairs. Um, G and C have three hydrogen bonds between them. You have an acceptor on this side and a donor on this side. That's where your NH bond is. Here's the donor. Here's the donor. And you have to have corresponding acceptors in just the right location. And that's how the pairs always pair up as GC or AT. AT only has two but they have to be oriented in exactly the right way. So this is where the Vesper model matters, right? So you have to understand the shape of the pieces in order to understand how the pieces are gonna to come together. Okay, so hydrogen bonding, super, super important. Um, so I know it's summertime outside, it's raining like crazy. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I have a metal roof, so you might be able to. Um, it's raining like crazy right now, so you wouldn't even know that it's summer, but it is. And so maybe you forget about ice and snow and everything, but it turns out the way that water crystallizes is really, really important to the way that our planet works. So I am going to share this link with you. Go check it out.